So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to another album anniversary review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector, and today I'm joined by Nick Sino and JC Rock and Metal Review. So Nick, how are you tonight? Good, Hector. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah. Uh, and JC, uh, at this moment in time, you're you're basically part of this channel. <laughs> How are you, man? You, you're basically like an honorary coucher. Yeah. So how are you, man? <laughs> yeah, me, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the honorary coucher. So we're here to talk yeah. about an album that turns uh, 25 years old, believe it or not, and it's Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, 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 Californication, which I have it on vinyl. Oh, yeah. So this is an album that came out on June 8th, 1999. And I remember in 1999, I played the shit out of this album. Like this album was on repeat uh, to me. This this was like, basically it was like a comeback album, sort of, because in 1991, they had a great success with Blood Sugar Sex Magic, but Joe Fushianti left the band. And in 1995, they released One Hot Minute with, uh, you know, Dave Navarro, who's a great guitar player from King's Addiction. But I don't know, I, it just didn't feel, it, it felt like kind of different. And that was an album that I think it's an album that uh, gets a lot of crap. Maybe that one should be, uh, we should do that one, One Hot Minute for Is It That Bad? Because it was an album that, uh, it was the follow-up to Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And, uh, you know, it was like a commercial dip. Uh, for the band. So when they announced for Californication that Joe Fuggianti was back, you know, it was yeah. great success. And uh, I was reading it all, it almost got a lot of positive reviews. I just saw like a few like NME gave it a 6.5 out of 10, but most, most of the reviews were positive and they were like praising the, the change in sound for the band because these were more of a melodic effort for the band so yeah so we're here to talk about it see how it has held up 25 years later so uh nick uh what was your like initial like history with this album when it came out well i was uh i wouldn't say i was a huge chili peppers fan when it, when it came out back in 1999 but i had been familiar with with everything off of blood sugar sex magic and a lot of the stuff off of one hot minute so um, when this album came out, I remember when I first heard Scar Tissue on the radio, I was driving around, I, somebody was, I was in the passenger seat of somebody's car, driving around, and I heard it on the radio, and I didn't realize it was the Chili Peppers when I first heard it, because I thought it was some sort of weird reggae band, I'm like, who is this band, why are they play? it was a rock and a rock radio station, I'm wondering, what, 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 what band is this, and then I realized it's the Chili Peppers, and uh, that kind of blew my mind when I when I first heard it, and I really really loved that song. I loved the record when it came out, and I really have continued to be a, a big Chili Peppers fan uh, since. And I've always considered, uh, like you're saying, when John Frusciante came back into the fold with Californication, that that was kind of uh, when the band got their second wind a little bit in 1999, yeah. where they reestablished themselves as being a big band. There were so many huge singles off of Californication. You had Scar Tissue, Other Side. Uh, the, the the title track there's so many huge singles off of this and reestablished the chili peppers as being this huge rock band and i think they've continued to to ride that wave ever since for the last 24 25 you know the 25 years since californication came out so i i loved the album back then and i've continued to love it ever since then so i'm a, I'm a big fan of this record yeah their last albums have sucked in my opinion but, oh. <laughs> but yeah i did a review I like, for the last one and i called it mild chili peppers <laughs> but yeah. yeah uh yeah this one this one yeah it was like the second wind of the band because in the 80s uh i i don't know for a lot of i i got to know them with blood sugar sex magic and i did listen to mother's milk but the first or the first albums in the 80s i wasn't too like familiar with them. So I really got into them in the 90s. So uh, JC, what, what about you? What's your history with this album when it came out? Okay, yeah, I listened to this one a, a little bit afterwards, after it came out. I remember when it came out, I remember seeing the album cover because it was one of those album covers that just like really like stood out with the orange and the, the blue and the, the swimming pool and the sky and all that. So I remember the, the album cover. So I remember that like catching my eye but uh i was kind of listening to other stuff uh back at that time but then 
when I uh, started listening to it, maybe years later, I uh, really like this album a lot. I, I think it just has uh, just lots of great singles, but even like the deep cuts are are really good. We'll talk about that in the next round. Uh, I think um, like the Chili Peppers, like you can kind of like, like divide their uh, discography from uh, like Blood Sugar, Sex Magic and before that, and then like One Hot Minute and like after that. I think they were kind of like, went through like two different periods. Uh, this one that I think uh, made them more of uh, like superstars. And even like after uh, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, which is also another great album. <clears throat> but I think um, this one, I think if they just like got everything like right on this one, like it's just, they just had the great songs and uh, lots of different styles, you know, some more like melodic stuff. There's some stuff that sounds like their older stuff. I'll, I'll mention that in the second round. And uh, they have some more like acoustic stuff laid back. So I, I really like this album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, when, uh, I loved it when it came out. And also it's produced by Rick <clears throat> Rubin. Uh, Rick Rubin came back to produce because I think he he had produced uh, some albums with them for the past. Uh, because I think Blood Sugar Sex Magic was produced by Rick Rubin but mixed by Brendan O'Brien, if I'm not mistaken. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so he came back for this one. And uh, this is an album that I really enjoyed it back in the day when it came out. Uh, uh, this is an album for me that is it's really like a road trip type of record. Right? Yeah. Yeah, this is an album that I like to drive and listen to these songs because the... They have different styles, like JC said. They have some of their more like funky stuff, but they have more acoustic stuff. Uh, so I think it was a mixture of everything they did. And I think on this one, Anthony Kiddis started like, uh, when he did Under the Bridge in Blood Sugar Sex Magic, he started to sing more and not just like more rap like he used to do yeah. in the older stuff. So uh, yeah, I loved it when it came out. I bought it on CD and uh, when I started like doing my vinyl collection, uh, I started just buying all the albums that I love from the 90s. And uh, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I have Californication and Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And oh, I also got By The Way uh, because it wasn't that expensive. So I'm like, I'll get By The Way too. But yeah, Californication, like Nick said, is the second uh, wave of the band that uh, and I and I re, I also I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers on this tour in Orlando, and the openers were the Foo Fighters. Uh, nice. Yeah. So I saw the, Yeah, I saw the Foo Fighters open for them, and it, it was when the Foo Fighters only have like they, I think they were going to release their third album, and I remember they were they opened for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Right now, I. I think I, I think maybe the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers might open for them, <laughs> but uh, it would be debatable because both bands are huge. But at that moment, Red Hot Chili Peppers was very huge. And that concert was great. Uh, uh, the, I remember the Red Hot Chili Peppers pranked the Foo Fighters. They, uh, they threw stuff at them almost at the last song. But yeah, great concert. And they played a lot of this album in full for that tour. So I, that's, I think... Uh, I would dare say, you know, I think Blood Sugar Sex Magic is a classic, but I think I like Californication just a little bit better. I don't know if it's because it's yeah, I think so. nostalgic uh, memories than uh, than Blood Sugar Sex Magic, at least for me at, the, at that time. So, yeah, that, that's my history with the album. So now we're going to round two where we're going to talk about tracks that we love and, and deep cuts because, like JC mentioned, there's some deep cuts here. So, Nick... Uh, what tracks you love from this record? Well, obviously the singles on this record are, are huge and they're all great songs too, like great classic all time Chili Pepper songs. So I love all those, those singles, but then some of the other, the album tracks, Parallel Universe has always been one of my favorite uh, album tracks on, on uh, Californication. Uh, I love Get On Top. That's always a good one. It's a good funky Chili Peppers song, very old school uh, Chili Peppers song. Uh, I love um, Easily. That's a really good one too. Uh, and then I love that you were saying, uh, Hector, that it's a it's a road trip album. And then you actually have the song Road Tripping. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah, it's very serene, very chill song talking about get, you know they need snacks and supplies when they're on the on the road road trip. And so I've always really in loved the that USA. Song. <laughs> yeah, I really love that one. And then there's actually 
some b-sides and some i think maybe a deluxe edition of the record there's a couple of different tracks uh that came out there's a, a b-side called gong lee i don't know if you've ever heard it. it's a very cool like uh b-side that they released on on californication and it's uh got a very cool bass line and, and uh guitar part with john frusciante and flea who really are like one of the best guitar and bass well the three of them guitar bass and drums with with chad smith as well like one of the best three piece ensembles ever those guys just lock together so well and just know how to jam so well together. And then you throw Anthony Kiedis on there and it always, it always gels really well together. So I like that song as well. It's a, this is a solid album from front to back. And unlike you, Hector, I have, I think that the chili peppers have continued that quality throughout the majority of the last 25 years. Oh, like the last standard, that's not yeah. <laughs> you know, but like, you know, this was a good, a good starting point for them to, you know, cause they did by the way, which was a great album. They did stay yeah. Arcadian, which I thought was really great as well. So they were on a roll starting with Californication and a lot of the songs on this album. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I like uh, a stadium Arcadium after that. They kind of lost my, uh, my, like I'm with you. I don't know when John Fushanti left again. I'm like again, yeah, I'm but right. but yeah. So JC, uh, what tracks do you like from this one? Uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say some of the same ones as uh, uh, like Parallel Universe. That's a great song. It's very popular. I don't think it was ever a single though. Um, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, easily, easily is a great song. It's just it's one of those like catchy songs that that probably could have been a single. And it's such a just a, a great song. I love the vocals on that one. And I'll well I'll pick one uh, nobody said yet. Uh, I like dirt track number ten. That's one of those like funky songs. It just reminds me of like that old school Chili Peppers going back to like Mother's Milk. Yeah, do you know what? That's like a very it's fun. About? What do you know what I like dirt? It's about. No, I didn't. I didn't like look it up. I think though. I read that it's about Anthony Kiddies liking to have sex on women when they're in their period. <laughs> Sounds like him. <laughs> Sounds like him, yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's, it's a cool, like funky song. Um and also road trip and that that was a single, but also just a great acoustic song. Like yeah. Oh, it is. Like yeah. they had some great ballads, yeah. Yeah, this album has a great mix of ballads. Uh, another single that, that you know, around the world that opens the album, that's a great album opener. And the bass, the -na 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 -na. you you it's it's a very good album opener that sets the the mood for the record. Uh I was sure I think they, they could have this is an album that they could have had easily had three more singles, easily could have been a single. Parallel yeah. Universe could have been a single. Easily has one of my favorite guitar parts on this record. It's just great and it's melodic. Uh, a song that you haven't mentioned that it's, I like it because it's like a quiet ballad and very tender, it's Porcelain. Uh, I think it's a, it's a yeah. beautiful track. It kind of, it, it reminds me a little bit of like on Blue, uh, on Blood Sugar Sex Magic, uh, they had a song called I Could Have Lied, uh, which was like yeah. an acoustic track. And that one was about Sinead O'Connor not returning Anthony Kiddis Love. This one, I don't know who was about uh, Porcelain, but uh, I actually, I don't know about you guys, but I actually read Anthony Kiddis' like, uh, biography. Uh, it's called Scar Tissue. Have, have you read that one? Yeah. No. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not surprised why people uh, now are surprised that he's dating 19-year-olds. Ha have you read his book? <laughs> like, that, yeah. is, that is his thing. Uh, he, he's just giving Leonardo DiCaprio wrong for his money. <laughs> his his so, book is really funny because, like, he... he basically talks about all the women that he's been with and all the drugs that he's done. And then he just casually mentions making an album. And then he goes back to talking about the women and the drugs. <laughs> very little. Well, the music plays a very small part in that biography. Yes. It, I thought it was good. I'm like, what about the music? But my favorite biography uh, uh, that I read recently last year, and I did an album re uh, book review was the Dave Grohl one. And you know why? Because he focused on the music. I'm like, I'm like, okay, we know they all do like Molly Cruz, the drugs. It can get boring. So I, I want to know more about the music. And on that book, uh, he he said uh, that he slept with uh, T. Fleece's uh, sister, and he didn't know it until the book was out. 
<laughs> so like surprise me, like, uh, yeah, no, no. Anthony Kiddis is a great vocalist, kind of douchey, <laughs> but a great vocalist. Yeah. And, totally. uh, you know, he's got a, like a great presence to him. So yeah, the track, uh, the singles are great. My favorite single from this album was Californication and the music video. Do you guys remember the music video? Uh, it was like a yeah. video game. And uh, I, I, the only thing is like uh, after like uh, sometimes when they uh, the Brown Shippers uh, like release albums, I I my question that I ask is how many songs about California can they write? <laughs> yeah. Like like there has to be a moment. Like what what more can you say about that state? It's like Cypress Hill talking about weed. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's yeah. like okay, we get it. You like weed, and we get it. You love California. You're from California, but but please stop putting California on everything. But <laughs> yeah, this is uh, uh, 25 years later. Yeah, I, uh, I like all those tracks. I think I mentioned uh, some deep cuts. Yeah, so yeah, all great tracks. So uh, let's talk. You know, like third and final round. Like uh, what we like? Do, do we think that this has H well, uh, maybe if, if there's some critiques that we have, and obviously, if if like 25 years later, uh, as it stood up. So, Nick, your your thoughts on this one? I absolutely think it's it's held up 25 years later. This is an album that I still uh, listen to, and is an album that's still in rotation in in some of the playlists that I have on Spotify and on my iPod in the car. So a lot of these songs still pop up for me, and I still think, like I said, it was uh, the beginning of a new era for the chili peppers and a new uh, era for their, their songwriting because they were able to uh, reach the radio hits with this one and reach some of their biggest hits of their career and launch that second win that we were talking about for their, their career. So I think it not only holds up that, but it's basically established. This is actually my favorite um, era of the chili peppers. I know a lot of people are more inclined towards the earlier albums up until blood sugar, sex magic, and then, and maybe up until this one. But for me, when I think about my favorite chili peppers albums, it kind of starts with Californication goes on through, through the other ones right up until now. I do like their, their new stuff as well. Uh, even if they do still sing a lot about California, um, I'm still, I'm still down with it. Um, and I think this album is, uh, it's still a classic. It sounds good too. The production is still really good. It, it's really punchy and really modern. Um, and it's 25 years later, it still pops out of the speakers every time I listen to it. So I'm going to say this album's still a classic 25 years later. It's one of the Chili Peppers best albums for sure. Yeah, to totally, man. And, uh, uh, I don't know what Rick Rubin has. Maybe just showing up and leaving <laughs> makes for a good production. Like, 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 yeah. So, what about you, JC? Yeah, I think it's a great album. Uh, so speaking of Rick Rubin, I think uh, like there are some bands that he like really clicks with, and I think he just really does He's well. Probably with being one of them <laughs> with the with the Chili Peppers. No, yeah, because I'm thinking like. Other than that, that one Slayer album, like he, he hasn't really done great with metal bands, like whether it's Slipknot or Metallica. I think like uh, System of a Down. He did, oh, he did that one too, right? Yeah, he worked with them on Toxicity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Actually, that one is, that's a great album too. But um, with the Chili Peppers, I think like everything Rick Rubin does with the Chili Peppers is great. So for me, yeah, it still holds up. Um, I have the three favorite albums uh, from this band, and they they can kind of like all be number one. They can kind of like very close. It's uh, Californication, this one, The Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and Mother's Milk. Like that's like the trilogy of great albums for me. And it's all like the the different stuff, which is kind of interesting because like the stuff before Mother's Milk, even though it's a really funky stuff, I like I don't. There's not like a lot of like great like albums like i i always thought they weren't great i think there were like three or four albums before uh blood sugar sex match or mother's milk yeah and uh freaky style like they're okay something else yeah no i think that there's like good, three yeah. or four before mother's milk yeah so but they're like not they're okay they're like the funky funky albums but like they just didn't have like the great production or anything like that but uh Blood Sugar, it's awesome. This album is awesome, and Mother's Milk is awesome. Uh, and and the other one, uh, One Hot Minute, I, I don't think it's that bad for me. I, I think it's, it's some pretty good songs in there. And, and the stuff after 
this. I liked some of it. Like the, the album after this, I like uh uh what's it called is by the way, right? The, the, by, the way. by the way, it is good. Stadium Arcadium is good, but that's like a super long album. That's like <laughs> two and a half hours. Yeah. It was a double album. Uh, that's a really long album, yeah. And after that's like that, a lot of music. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. It was a good white record. And then too. after, I, the I liked it when it came out, but I haven't replayed it that much uh, in years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like some of the, some of the modern stuff, like Dark Necessities. That that's a good song, but you know, I I, I prefer like those like that like middle like '90s, late '80s, '90s uh, period of Chili Peppers. That's my favorite era. Yeah. Maybe we should do a poll of some Red Hot Chili Peppers album to see for an is it that bad. But I would put Hot Minute in there because I know Hot Minute, one Hot Minute got like uh, mixed reviews, even though I think there's some solid stuff there. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's a darker record. But uh, for me, this one, 25 years later, it's held up. Uh, I It's my favorite Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Uh, and then I have Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, Mother's Milk. I have to... I know it's great, but I gotta revisit it more. But the one that I I would say third right now of the ones that I listen to the most, I would say by the way, uh, is the one that I uh, the third one. But yeah, Californication. To me, twenty five years later, you know, this has still held up. You know, it's it's great. That's why I own it on vinyl. Uh, I have a picture of my daughter like grabbing this record, and she said that she loved it because of the colors. I'm like, yeah, but you can't listen to it. <laughs> yeah it's it's not a children's record but yeah it's great and i think on this one i think uh uh they got their second win like we just dated and just great songwriting in particular you know like the singles are so great and uh i think yeah it, that's why it held up I, I would say this is a classic so if like we want to know from you cultures what do you think of Californication by Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers. How has this held up 25 years later? And comment, what are your favorite tracks from the record and earliest memories? And if you saw the band live, did you saw them on this tour like I did? Because I saw them on this tour and then I saw them in 2014 in Puerto Rico. I think they were touring or they were touring after I'm With You and it wasn't a bad concert, but this one was better uh, in my opinion. So yeah, I want to thank my guest, uh, Nick Sino from Nick Sino Music. Like, you know, uh, he does a great content on his channel. He talks a lot about like rock albums. Sometimes I've, I've done some album reviews with him recently. And he also, he's a musician and he plays covers. Uh, he did a cover for a Foo Fighters Everlong. Uh, great cover, man. I enjoyed it. Oh, oh thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, you should teach Wes Catlin to sing. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Got him to come in there. That guy, be awesome. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or that guy in Instagram that posts like oh, we won't name him. Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, he'd be awesome. Be great yeah. collaboration. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so subscribe to his channel, and of course, JC Rock and Metal reviews. Uh, his channel, you know, he does a lot of history rankings. He's also doing a video. For this album where he puts more about the history and behind the scenes so like yeah. jc's videos are like mini documentaries uh so yeah that's what i try for you <laughs> yeah no no that's your thing you know that uh, so yeah. like uh, you are the best at doing that like uh and it's it's very interesting and you do it in a way that's interesting but you give it also your own flair so please subscribe to jc rock and metal reviews and of course he he He's on my channel all the time, and I've been on his channel as well. Uh, it, it has been a, a like a hot minute since we have done like a, a video for your channel, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a long time since uh, yeah. yeah, I posted one of mine. Yeah, yeah no, no, we, we have to do one for your channel. Yeah, yeah because I, I, we're, we're always doing uh, episodes of Visit the Fed and... <laughs> Yeah, and and then you have. Oh, the we'll do one soon, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have to do something for something, and of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Uh, this weekend, uh, if you see this, also there's a video for the 30 years of STP's Purple, uh, which premiered on Friday, and this Sunday, a new episode of Is It That Bad 
and we are talking about Radiohead, a moon-shaped pool, as picked by Señorita Sabrosura. So Radiohead fans, do not get mad at me. Señorita, Señorita picked that one, but it was an interesting album to go listen to again. And on that episode, I'm joined by Nose Reviews, uh, The Green Man, Señor, and Señorita Sabrosura, Sunday at 10 a.m. So uh, that's what I had for the channel. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.